Hey friends, it's Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Terry and I am the author of one, soon to be two, young adult fantasy novels. The release of Flame Seeker is now less than two weeks away. But today we are here to talk about a different book and that is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. So my intention for this video is to be a little bit less of a book review and more of just a book discussion. I really just want to talk about this book, what happened, and what I think about it, and so this video is going to have spoilers in it. There's just no way around that. There's no way to talk about how twisty and bizarre this book is without talking about spoilers. This is the third Lisa Jewell book that I have read. I have read The Night She Disappeared and Invisible Girl. I liked The Night She Disappeared, but I found the ending of that book to be a little unbelievable. And then Invisible Girl, I just didn't really care for as much. So this is a thriller that follows two women, Josie and Alex. Alex is a successful podcaster and Josie is a part-time worker at an alteration shop. These two women cross paths at a pub where they're both out celebrating their 45th birthday. They're birthday twins. And so this really catches Josie's attention and she decides she wants to tell her life story to Alex. Alex's podcast has covered the stories of successful women, how they went from the struggles that they found themselves in, how they pulled themselves up and made something of their lives. That podcast is currently coming to an end and so Alex needs to find a new topic to discuss. Josie pitches the idea to her, have you ever considered doing a story about someone whose life is about to change for the better but they haven't yet done it? And so that's what brings these two women together. Over the course of the next month, Josie comes to Alex's recording studio, which is in a shed in the garden at her house, and she tells her life story to Alex. And as this goes on, it becomes increasingly clear that there are some disturbing aspects to Josie's life and Josie herself, and possibly not everything that she's telling Alex is true. That's the whole premise of this book. None of this is true. What's true? What isn't? And so let's talk about this book. I do have to say I absolutely devoured this book. I binge read it in two days. In fact, I just finished it yesterday and I should have started work on outlining my next book yesterday, but instead I put that aside because I had to know what happens. I have to know how this book ends. And I have to say, was it worth it? <sighs> Not really. So we'll get into that. But this book is exciting. It's fast paced. The chapters are very short. It is twisty. It is dark. It's messed up. It's honestly one of the creepiest books I've ever read and I've read some books in the horror genre, not many, but this is by far the creepiest. I think that's because there's an ordinariness to it. These kinds of people do exist. They're out there somewhere and that's terrifying to think about. Josie is obsessed with Alex. I'm not exactly sure why. Early on in the story she gives off a vibe of wanting to be Alex. Alex kind of portrays this outward image of having the perfect life, the perfect house, and possibly the perfect husband, although as Josie soon comes to find out, Alex's husband, Nathan, is far from perfect. He has a drinking problem. He often stays out all night on benders and doesn't come home. And there's the implication that he's also gotten into doing cocaine as well, but that's never actually proven. So I think Josie is obsessed with being Alex. She wants Alex's life. She wants her life to be more like Alex. She wants to be Alex. She wants to have what Alex has. And her behavior towards Alex is very stalkerish and obsessive. Alex never sees this side of Josie because Josie starts googling her and listening to all her podcasts and she goes by her house when Alex isn't there and she steals things. She steals various items from Alex's house on the visits that she has to record a podcast episode. She takes a little memento with her and then later in her home she caresses these items and kisses them and then stuffs them in the back of her underwear drawer. This is really creepy and odd behavior and a this comes into play later on for me as well. One of the items that she steals is a spoon, which she then is caressing in public as she's sitting outside. And she's looking around to make sure nobody's watching her and nobody appears to be doing so. But this is very odd behavior. It almost comes across as kind of kleptomaniac-like because it's kind of implied that Josie can't help but take little things here and there, but I'm not exactly sure that that's why she's doing it. So there's clearly something off about Josie. Josie early on tells Alex about her married life and her husband, Walter, who is much older than her. And you know that from the very first scene you see them together in the pub that where they're celebrating her birthday, but you don't realize how much older Walter is until later on. Now I know that there is a word that YouTube doesn't like people to say which refers to an inappropriate over fondness for children so from now on I'm going to use the word creep but you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is heavily implied that Walter is a creep and 
This is exactly what Josie tells Alex. She tells Alex that she met Walter when she was 13. By 15, he was taking her out to pubs on her birthday and slipping her some vodka in her drink and then taking her back to his place where he slept with her. And the moment she turned 18, they announced their engagement to her mother. My argument would be that we don't actually know for certain that Walter is a creep. We have only Josie's word for that. Now, let me make this very clear. I am in no way defending Walter and I personally do think he is a creep, but again, that's only if we believe what Josie says. Walter actually warns Alex that Josie often lies and has a loose relationship with the truth. The two of them go over to Alex's house for dinner one night as part of a way to try to convince Walter to contribute to the podcast. Josie says she only thinks that this is likely to happen if Walter goes to talk to them socially in the form of going out to dinner, so to speak, for example. And if Alex's husband, Nathan, is there as well. Well, Nathan doesn't come home. He's off on one of his benders, so it's just Alex. The dinner is a disaster, but while Alex shows Walter her recording studio, he warns her that Josie is something of a liar or at least less than truthful. And I do think this plays out throughout the rest of the book. What happens after this dinner really sets off the rest of the events of the book. When Josie and Walter get back to their house, they have an argument and we don't actually see what happens at the time, but it's pretty clear that Walter is dead because this is a thriller and we know to expect from the beginning that people end up dead. So Josie shows back up at Alex's house at three in the morning, beaten and bloody, and claims that Walter attacked her and she needs some place to stay because she can't go home. This leads to Josie staying at Alex's house for a week and Having this woman in your house with access to your life and everything in it and being able to snoop around and just generally be creepy and poke her nose into your business is not a good thing, but that's exactly what happens. It's pretty clear that Walter is dead and Josie attacked and killed him and not the other way around. But again, Josie is spinning her own story. Josie also is of the opinion, and she professed this to Alex before, that if Walter were dead, her life would be better, she would be free, and she wouldn't really feel sad. When she asks Alex if she would feel the same way if her husband Nathan died, Alex replies that she would be sad, to which Josie is shown to be disapproving. She basically takes the viewpoint that they'd be better off without the men in their lives, and she thinks that she would be doing Alex a favor if she got rid of Alex's husband. And that's basically what happens. She sets Nathan up. He's out drinking with his friends one evening, and Josie hires an actress that she knows who is struggling to play a part, to lure him to a hotel, to try to make it look like he's being unfaithful to Alex, which he isn't. And I don't really know what Josie's intentions were with this. She claims that she only meant to kidnap Nathan and hold him for a few days to, I suppose, maybe make Alex realize that this absence isn't so bad, I can make it on my own and do without him. But I think more likely it would just make the two of them realize how close they came to losing everything and how much what they have means to them. And it would just make their relationship stronger. So I don't believe Josie when she says what happens next was an accident and she only intended to hold Nathan for a few days. What really happens is that Josie kills Nathan by giving him an overdose of barbiturates and she later dumps his body in a lake where it's eventually found. So Josie killed Walter, which we'll disregard because it's very likely that Walter was a creep. And then she kills Nathan. Now, Nathan was not perfect. He was not necessarily a great husband. He, he had a big drinking problem, but he certainly didn't deserve to die. And there was no right for Josie to do what she did. And I see some people not really defending Josie, but sort of, kind of, in that they are not condemning her as harshly as I feel they should. And instead, they're kind of throwing shade at Alex for saying mean things in her podcast to Josie in case she's listening. Josie's a piece of crap. She deserves this. She's a terrible person and she did terrible things. And I don't know if what she did is a result of the trauma that she supposedly went through, but I don't really care because it doesn't excuse it. And I think it's a dangerous line to walk when you start making up excuses for people who do things like this. When Josie's husband Walter's body was found, he was found in the bathtub and her daughter Erin, who is a gamer, was found tied up in a cupboard by the stairs. 
Now, Erin is one of two daughters that Josie and Walter has. She's implied to be slightly autistic and she's made a name for herself in the online community by gaming and streaming the games. In fact, she's so successful that not only does she have a large online following, but she's been able to make quite a decent bit of money from her gaming. She only stays in her room, she doesn't come out, and she doesn't eat solid food. And there are multiple times when Josie approaches her bedroom door thinking that she needs to go in there, but she doesn't. And she always touches the doorknob kind of reverently, thinking how much she loves this daughter. But in one scene, she starts to think to herself that maybe Erin is part of the problem. And this is just another pattern of problematic thoughts that Josie has that I think ultimately points to her as being the bad guy and not telling the truth. So Erin is found tied up in the cupboard. She did not die, but she was nearly killed because of dehydration and lack of food and sustenance by the time she's found, so Josie is charged with attempted murder in her case. Her other daughter, Roxy, left home when she was 16. We later learn that Roxy was friends with a girl named Brooke who later went missing. Come to find out, Roxy was not just friends with Brooke, they were together. And Erin later re reveals that Brooke stopped by prom night to Josie's house, but Roxy wasn't there. Erin heard arguing, so she poked her head out of her room, and she saw her mother become physically violent with Brooke, to which the Erin then ducked back into her room out of fear, and she then heard the altercation that took place that ultimately led to Brooke's death, and she claims that this is one of the reasons why she doesn't leave her house. Brooke's body is found stuffed in the trunk of a car that is in the mews behind Josie's house. And the very last scene of the book, Josie is thinking back on everything that she's done, all the lies she's told, and she really doesn't know what the truth is anymore. But the one thing that feels like the truth to her for certain is that she remembers that night differently. She remembers Roxy being there, Roxy getting physical with her girlfriend Brooke, striking Brooke and killing her by mistake, panicking. Josie then calls Walter and asks him for help. Walter directs them to store the body in the car, in the mews, and that's exactly what they do. So who's telling the truth? Is it Roxy telling the truth and Josie killed Brooke? Or is Josie telling the truth or remembering the truth and Roxy killed Brooke? I think Josie killed Brooke. I think Josie is a liar. And part of the reason I think this is because multiple people have said that Josie is possessive and jealous and she doesn't like anyone showing affection to someone who's not her. So in the case of Brooke, Roxy's affection was turned from Josie in her mind to Brooke, who is Roxy's girlfriend. Josie can't abide this, and so Brooke has to go. And I think that's probably what happened. Not only do Josie's own daughters back this up, but Walter kind of backs it up, and her mother, Josie's own mother, does as well. Now, Josie's mother is probably a raging narcissist, so we're not sure we can take what she says as the truth either, you have to also take that with a grain of salt. But I feel like this has more weight to it because it's coming from multiple people. We're told that Josie didn't like the daughters and Walter being affectionate with each other. Anytime he tried to plan a fun family outing, she got upset and tried to sabotage it. And one of the things she tells Alex is, in line with Walter being a creep, she says that every night, about 30 minutes after they go to bed, she hears him get up and he goes into Aaron's room. And she leads Alex to believe that Walter goes in there to abuse Aaron as well, to which Alex is rightfully horrified and she confronts Josie and says, you've known that this has been going on to your own daughter for years and you've done nothing? And Josie gets really defensive and says, what was I supposed to do? Basically, Josie just pretends that it doesn't exist. However, by Aaron's own admission, Walter was in there to game with her. He did it at night so that Josie would find out about it because she wouldn't approve because she doesn't like them being affectionate. She wants them only to be affectionate toward her. And so Walter and Aaron enjoying gaming together would not be allowed. It would definitely be frowned upon. And Aaron claims that her online followers like her dad, Walter, so much. They call him Pops and they really enjoy him being a part of the stream, which is something that's easily verifiable. If this was a lie, it could be easily disproven. And so that's why I think it's the truth. People in general don't usually blatantly lie about something that could be so easily proved one way or the other. So 
I think Josie lied about that as well. And Arian is insistent that her father is not a creep. Jury's still out on that. I think he probably is if what they said is true about him showing interest in Josie when she was so young. Obviously, there's not a lot of explanation for that. Certainly not a good one. But most of the things that Josie said about Walter to Alex were not true. Which leads me to believe that Josie is lying about most all, if not everything else. And we also have to look at her behavior. Like I said, she stole things and was kissing them. Things she stole from Alex's house. That's really creepy. That's not something normal people do. We have to look at her obsessive stalkerish behavior toward Alex. We have to look at the creepy sudden dark thoughts she was having toward Aaron, blaming her as part of the problem. And that was just creepy. Aaron hadn't done anything. She doesn't come out of her room. How is she part of the problem? This daughter that you're supposed to love and that you claim to love so much, suddenly you're having these really creepy thoughts about her. All of this adds up to the conclusion that I don't think Josie is a nice person. I don't think she's to be trusted. We also can't forget the fact that Josie killed Alex's husband for no reason. Like, even if Walter is a creep and deserves what he gets, Nathan didn't. Like I said, he's not perfect, but he didn't deserve to be murdered. And that's really messed up. And taken all together, I think Josie is just a piece of crap. But what really disappoints me most about this book, and why I said that I didn't think it was worth it to binge read, was at the end, you don't know the truth. You still don't know where the truth really lies. As I said, the end scene is Josie thinking about the incident with Brooke, and she remembers it differently than the way Roxy tells it. And to Josie, this is the truth. But we as the reader don't know for certain what the truth is because the author doesn't tell us. We're left to try to piece together whatever the truth may be from what we know, from what the characters say to what they do. I'm inclined to believe that Josie is the one who's lying and she's done all these horrible things because her actions tell me that that's the truth. That's who she really is. But if you're looking for the book to tell you definitively one way or another, you're not going to find it here. And I thought that was really disappointing. Not only that, but Josie gets away with it at the end. She's never arrested. She's never brought to justice for her crimes. And I found that to be disappointing as well. I kind of worry that that might be the case the more I read on when it was very clear that yes, Josie in fact has this dark side to her and she's done these horrible things. I kind of worried that there wasn't going to be a satisfactory ending in terms of justice and that's exactly what happened. It's not the lack of ending that other books I've read have done where it just lacked a complete ending whatsoever, but this was still very disappointing. I've talked about genre expectations in another book review that I did and I realized that thrillers are not mysteries, but in mysteries, an expectation of the genre is kind of that justice is served at the end. The bad guy is caught and punished for what he did. That doesn't undo what he did, but he's still punished. In real life, bad people get away with bad things all the time and they're never brought to justice. We can't ensure that that happens every single time in real life, but within the confines of fiction, we can. And that's what the satisfaction is, in part, to mysteries. Not only do you have this complicated, enticing puzzle to solve, and hopefully you have likable, realistic, relatable characters to go on this journey with and solve the puzzle with, but you also have justice delivered at the end. And all of that taken together is what makes mysteries so satisfying. We get that satisfying conclusion that we're so often denied in real life. Now, I know that thrillers are not mysteries, but to me, it's not that different. We still had a crime committed and this horrible person got away with what they did. They weren't brought to justice and they weren't punished. And so that is why I felt a little bit underwhelmed by the book and it's also why I personally wouldn't recommend it. Even though I think it was well done, it was certainly compelling and entertaining and I binged through it in two days, but it ultimately left me with kind of an underwhelming feeling. So I think that's everything I wanted to say on this book. I feel like I said a lot and was also very confusing because this book was confusing. It was twisted, it was all just a lot, but I hope that that makes sense and you understand why I felt the way I did with this book. I don't know that you can take anything anybody says in this book as the truth, but I certainly don't believe Josie because her actions tell me otherwise. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. My name is Rachel Terry. I am the author of one, almost two, young adult fantasy books, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!